Of course, I'm joined by Todd Hornbeck of Hornbeck Offshore, and you are already suing the government over the moratorium. Can you just explain that? Well, uh, in June, uh, when we saw the moratorium and how it was brought uh, to us, uh, we decided that uh, this just wasn't a legal action the government could take out of hand by the stroke of a pen. Uh, so we sued the Department of Interior. We won uh, four judgments against them. All the judgments that we uh, went for, we won. Uh, I think it uh, it helped bring the moratorium to an end early. I think it was much longer process that we were going to go through of this moratorium being in action. Now we're in the part of the de facto moratorium. Even though the moratorium's been lifted, it still hasn't been deep water uh, permits issued or drilling permits of any kind for oil issued in the Gulf of Mexico. So um, now we're in the de facto part of the moratorium. And explain the difference between what's happening on the western side of the Gulf of Mexico, where in theory you can get a permit, but as you're saying, you really can't, and what was announced today by Ken Salazar. Well, two months prior to the Macondo well, the president had come out and, uh, and said that he was going to open up new acreage for drilling because the United States really needs these hydrocarbon resources. Alternatives aren't going to be ready in the next hundred years, so we really need to bolster our independence of uh, and winging ourselves off of foreign oil and foreign uh, hydrocarbons. So he was going to open up off of the coast of Virginia, the eastern, the far eastern part of the Gulf of Mexico, which would be like Florida. These are areas that have been off limits for forever, and open up off also some areas in the Pacific. Uh, now that and that's today's announcement. That's today's announcement. This was never okay. today's announcement didn't have anything to do with what was the traditional Gulf deep water now, drilling and the traditional. Uh, no production. matter how you slice it, it makes it very hard to operate your business. You've got 85 large vessels, anywhere from 200 feet to 400 feet. You're already moving them out of the Gulf Coast. How many have you moved? Well, we have about 40 percent of our vessels now that are placed outside of the traditional drilling market in the Gulf of Mexico, whether they're in specialty services, uh, like with military uh, contracts that we have, or in Brazil, Mexico, the Far East, and in Africa. You're going to move more out because of what's happening? Uh, well, we're looking at a lot of opportunities, and uh, what we've seen of the administration so far, and the pandering, and the promises, and all of the things that they have promised, not only the courts, but uh, the American people that they were going to issue permits just hasn't happened. So we're actively pursuing new contracts uh, overseas to take more equipment now, out. There are two catches, of course. You have to do this. But on the one hand, you're going offshore. That's not great for margins, is it? Number two, it means that jobs are leaving the U.S. Can you talk about these two issues? Well, there's a big job loss that's going to hit uh, not only, and a lot of people think this is a Louisiana or Texas problem. Uh, our vendor base that supports Hornbeck Offshore covers 48 states. Uh, most of our customers, we buy equipment and things that are manufactured in the U.S. from all over the United States. As these major assets and strategic assets move, like the major deep water drilling rigs, the big supply ships, we have to reduce crew here, lay those people off, move our operations overseas, and hire local content crews in those countries. Uh, because of the laws and the natures of those countries, that we'll have to pick up indigenous crew there. Uh, that's going to put a huge strain on a lot. Of, there, even in Ken Salazar's report, uh, when he first sent this to the president back in June, direct jobs were like 150,000 jobs affected directly. That's not counting the collateral damage so that is going to create. So huge ripple effect. And huge and you, ripple effect. We got to just hit quickly in the last 10, 15 seconds. Effect on the company, the margins, the earnings of having to move all these vessels offshore. Well, what what we said uh, in our last conference call is that we think the next couple of quarters is going to be pretty choppy uh, because we're going to have to reposition equipment, uh, move it out of the Gulf. And if permits do start uh, uh, being permitted to, to, to work, I think it's going to be a delayed reaction. So it's going to it's take not time. going to hit all It's a ripple time. effect. Guys, yes. uh, Todd Hornbeck of Hornbeck Offshore, uh, our guest. Todd, great to have you on today. Thank you. Thank you.